Hey everyone, welcome to part 48 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we will look at how to persist the state between scenes. So before we unload a scene, we will store all the state in it and we will restore them when they are loaded again. So we will look at how to do that. Special thanks to all my Patreons for making the series possible. By becoming a Patreon, you can support me in the making of the series and get access to some cool rewards like the complete project files of the series which also contains some advanced features that are not covered here. So let's start the video. So let's look at how to save data between scenes. So right now when we move to a different scene we will unload all the scenes that are not connected. Right. So if I go from route 1 to hometown, you can see that the town 2 scene was unloaded since it's not connected to hometown. So the problem is when town 2 is unloaded, it will lose the state of all its game objects. So what we have to do is before we unload a scene, we have to capture the states of all the objects in it. So let me explain this issue with an example. Let me just maximize this and I have a trainer over here in route 1 scene. So if I go battle this trainer and beat him, okay so I beat the trainer. So now the battle loss state of the trainer will be true, right? So the problem is now if we unload the route 1 scene, this trainer will also be unloaded and it will lose its state. So let me show you. So if I go to the house one scene, so if I minimize this, so if I enter the house one, then route one scene will be unloaded, right? So yeah, it's unloaded. And now if I go back to hometown, it's loaded again, but it'll lose all its state, right? The state of the trainer over here, along with all the other objects in that scene, will be lost. So now if we go and speak to that trainer, you can see that he challenges for a battle again since he lost his state. So what we have to do is, before unloading a scene, we have to save the states of all the objects in it. So let's look at how to do that. So I'll open my scene detail script. And in here, before unloading the scene, we have to capture all its state. And after loading the scene, we have to restore all its states. That's how we can implement this. So how can we find all the objects in the scene whose state should be saved? So if you go to a scene, you can see that all the objects that has savable states will have the savable entity script attached to it, right? This is how we are telling the saving system that we need to save this object. So what we can do is we can find all the objects in the scene that has the savable entity script. Okay. So after loading the scene, I'll find all the objects with the savable entity script. So I can easily do that by using find objects of type, right? And for the type, I'll pass savable entity. So this will return all the objects with savable entity script. But there is a problem. We only want to find the objects in the current scene, right? In the current scene that we are loading. And usually find objects of type will only load the objects from the current scene. But the problem here is we are using additive scene loading and we'll have multiple scenes open at the same time. So now, this function will load 
objects from all the scenes not just the current scene that's loaded so these are some of the troubles of using additive scene loading here if we want to get just the objects from the current scene then we'll have to write some additional code so to do that i'll add a bare condition so in order to use the where function we have to import link and here we have to check if the object belongs to the current scene right how can we check that so every game object has a property called scene so if i say x dot game object dot scene so yeah you can see the game object has a property called scene which specifies the scene it belongs to okay so we just have to check if that scene is equal to the scene that is currently loaded so right now we don't have a reference to the current scene we just have the name of it okay so we can actually get a reference using its name so for that i'll say scene manager dot get scene by name and for the name i'll just pass game object dot name okay and i'll store this in a variable called scene let me just change that to current scene for clarity and here i'll check if game object dot scene is equal to the current scene so now i can just use to list function on where and get a list of saveable entities in the scene all right so i'll store this in a variable called saveable entities so let me just encapsulate this code into a function to keep our code clean so i'll create a function called get saveable entities in scene and this function is going to return a list of saveable entity okay i'll paste those two lines here and at the end i'll just return the saveable entities all right so now from here i can just call get saveable entities in scene and get a list of saveable entities okay so after we load the scene we have to restore the saveable entities and before we unload the scene we have to store the states of the saveable entities somewhere so we'll have to call this function from the unload scene also so to avoid calling this twice i'll just store it in a global variable while loading so i'll create a list of saveable entities as a global variable and while loading i'll save it into that let me just correct the spelling so before unloading we have to store the state of the saveable entity somewhere so to do that we have a function inside our saving system so if you go to the saving system script here we have a dictionary called game state which can be used to store the states of all the objects whose state has been changed right and this is a function used to store the state and this is used to restore it okay so before unloading the scene we can call saving system dot instance dot capture entity states and for the entity states i'll just pass by saveable entities list okay so we are capturing it before unloading the scene next we have to restore it after we load the scene right so i'll call saving system dot i dot restore entity states 
and I'll pass the saved entities. So now we are restoring the entity states after we load the scene. But there's a small problem. Are we really restoring it after we load the scene? No. If we write these lines over here, the restoring might happen even before the scene loading is complete. So why is that? So the reason is load scene async is actually an async function. Okay. And what's an async function? Async functions are functions that are executed in the background, right? They are executed parallelly without blocking our current script. So here you can see this function loads the scene asynchronously in background. So what happens is even before the scene loading is complete, it will go to the next lines, right? And it will execute rest of the code. So in our case, it will be a problem because we only want to try and restore the entities once the scene loading is complete. So how can we do that? So if you look at the load scene async function, you can see that it returns a class called async operation. So first let's actually store the return value in a variable. I'll just call it something like operation. And inside this async operation object, we have a way to check if this operation is complete or not. Okay. So if I say operation dot completed, here you can see we have an event called completed. So this will be triggered once this operation is complete. So let's actually attach a Lambda function to this event. So we have an error here since the action in this event is expecting a parameter of async operation. So I'll just add that parameter there. So now this function will only be called once this operation is complete, which means once the scene loading is complete. So we can move these two lines into this lambda function and now it will only be called once the scene loading is fully complete all right so this is all we have to do we are storing the entity states before unloading the scene and we are restoring it after loading it so let's go to unity and test if this is working oops I want to run the gameplay scene instead. Okay. So first, let me go and beat this trainer real quick. So now if we unload the root one scene by going to some unconnected scene, let me actually minimize this and show you. So yeah, now if we go to house one, root one is unloaded, but hopefully this time all its states should be saved before unloading. So if we go back to hometown, root one is loaded again, and hopefully all its states should also be restored. So let's go talk to the trainer and confirm that. So yeah, trainer doesn't challenge me to a battle. So its state is stored and restored correctly. Okay. So one thing to note is that even though we are storing the state into a dictionary, we are not actually saving it into a file. Okay. The saving will only be done when you press S and save the game. All right, so now we have a system which will automatically persist the states of all the game objects in a scene, even if the scene gets unloaded. So next, let's fix another issue that we have. So if I go to house one scene and save, and then 
if I go to a scene that's not connected to house one so I go to root one root one is not connected to house one if I minimize it you can see that house one is unloaded since it's not connected to root one so now if I load the game we should load back in house one right so I'll press L and we are back in house one but the issue is the root one scene is still not unloaded right it should be unloaded since house one scene is not connected to root one so the issue is when we load the game the scene in which we were previously on will not unload even if it's not connected okay so this is not a big issue or anything but let's say if the previous scene was a huge scene then it's going to have some impact on the performance so let's look at the code to see how we can fix this issue so in our scene details script whenever we load a new scene we are also storing an instance of the previous scene right and then we are unloading all the connected scenes of the previous scenes if it's not in the connected scene of the current scene okay so we are unloading the connected scenes of the previous scene but we are not unloading the previous scene itself so we didn't do that because until now the previous scene would always be a connected scene to the current scene right we can only go from one scene to another if they are connected so until now it was like that but now since we implemented saving and loading we can load the game and go to a scene that is not connected to the current scene right so in that case previous scene won't be a connected scene so we will have to unload the previous scene also so we can just unload the previous scene by calling previous scene dot unload I'll call previous scene dot unload scene function to unload it but we only want to do this if the previous scene is not in the connected scene right let me actually store this in a variable so that we don't have to type all this every time we want to access the previous scene so I'll store it in a variable called previous scene. Now we can use that variable instead. All right, so we are unloading the previous scene, but we only want to do it if the previous scene is not a connected scene, right? So before doing this, I'll check if previous scene is not in the connected scene. All right so now the previous scene will also be unloaded if it's not a connected scene so let's go ahead and test this I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this and now if I go to root one and press L to load my last save you can see that root one has been unloaded correctly so that issue is fixed so i'll stop the video here if you think these videos are helpful please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel that will really help me out so i'll see you in the next video